So I wasn't going to make this video, but we, we're just going to do it because uh, I think we need to look at some stuff. Um, that has come out. All right. Okay, guys, welcome to the channel. So I'm Stalosa, and what we're going to do in this video is, you know what, before we do that, the reason why I wasn't going to make this video um, is because I'm sick to death of like negative stuff about Overwatch 2 um, in general. I, I think, honestly, it's starting to do my head in. Like I just, everywhere I look now, it's just like negativity, and I'm like, ah, a lot of these things could have been nipped in the bud if, if, Things were slightly different, but whatever. Like, we're going to go over this. A lot of you guys have been asking me to cover this. Um, so I'm just going to look at it. So what this is, it's a um, a Korean content creator has made a video um, which basically claims to have detailed insider information uh, regarding Overwatch 2's development. Um, and the video has got, uh, as of recording of this video, over 450,000 views. So it's obviously doing a lot of work. And a lot of people are watching this. But of course, it's all in Korean. So we can't, well, at least I can't understand it. But what we've got here on um, our competitive Overwatch is a, a a transcript in English. So we can go over this and take a look at this. So I think this is going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. But as I said at the top of this video, if you're not after negativity, then uh, it's probably in the video to watch because it's probably going to be quite negative because there's a lot of things thrown around here with things that have happened in the past with, with Overwatch and uh yeah, I'm just going to react to it. I'm just going to say what I feel about this, really. Because, of course, I don't know what's happened. But but we'll see. Let's see if we can sort of piece some bits and pieces together. Okay, so, uh, yeah, the, the TLDR is at the bottom, but we're not going to go to that just yet because we're going to go through the post. So, apparently, the video goes into most things that most of our competitive Overwatch already know at the start. But it highlights a few bits and pieces there that are new as well. His insider information in the past has been very much credible and he has a great track record when it comes to things related to Blizzard. Okay, so the context, let's get stuck into this. Updating the game with new characters added content and added content was not part of the game's development direction at the start. Thus, the back end was never properly equipped to handle this efficiently in terms of development cycles. This also stemmed from the fact that Team 4 came from a failed MMO development background, Project Titan, as well as having TF2 as a benchmark game, which have limited character pools. It was only when Overwatch 1 became a massive success, they realized they needed to significant uh, continuous updates uh, with new maps and characters they would generally uh, expect, that you would generally expect with any live service uh, games these days. They ship the product with the mindset that once this has been released, they can tweak minor things like non-live service games. Now, I think before we go any further here, like, I don't want to say this is hearsay because it might not be, but this is obviously someone's interpretation of the information they were given. And this has been translated into English. Uh, so again, like there's going to be inconsistencies and stuff uh, with this. What I would say about that section there is the idea that the game originally wasn't designed to have constant content going into it um when in fact it kind of was right because we had seasonal events and stuff now there is potential that seasonal events were designed prior to the launch of overwatch or at least to a state where they only required a bit of work to get them live and ready to go and that may indicate why after a number of years we then had effectively no new content because they literally hadn't made it um that could be true, and it, and it could be true that the Overwatch team wasn't built to uh, support a game that is a live service. And I think the notion that they didn't look at the game as a live service is kind of weird. Because if you remember, Jeff did say that all of the content for Overwatch would just be playable for Overwatch uh, owners of the game. Uh, and it was supposed to be supported with a loot box system, which, of course, as we know, probably didn't generate as much money as they wanted to. Because, of course, Fortnite and that whole... Battle Pass and all of that stuff came out of the woodwork around the time Overwatch launched, or at least a year after, um, and kind of completely changed the way games were, uh, content was viewed with games. So I, I, I can see credibility in that comment, I like because you can look at that from both points. You can say, okay, yeah, they stopped making content, so clearly they weren't designed to make content. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You can look at that in two different ways. He goes on to say, in a similar vein, the balancing strategy and mindset from Team 4 from the start was we do minimal balancing with a lot of consideration and aim for perfection infrequently, rather than frequent updates and consistent communication with the user base. His source pointed their approach to StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2 balancing as a point of comparison. This changed as LOL and other online PvP games brought a new paradigm, 
the par parody blah, blah, words i can't even say it uh, <laughs> of online game balancing so yeah like you know again you can you can look at that and go okay that that probably was the case because to begin with um balance wasn't um as frequent as it became but remember balance became very frequent uh, at a point in overwatch's life um and then even remember things like um the hero pools restricted hero pools and stuff like that all of that was designed as a type of balance to make the game play differently so maybe they did originally start off with the mindset of we're just going to make minor changes and let the players sort of work out and experience the game and find what are the strongest metas and stuff like that um and but obviously changed to let's make rapid updates and then obviously they stopped doing that as they well went away and walked on worked on overwatch 2. okay so where we are now the above context is relevant to overwatch 2. let me just take a quick drink guys let's take a drink The above context is relevant to Overwatch 2 because that is the same strategy they took when they started working on Overwatch 2, fully focusing on development of Overwatch 2 and leaving Overwatch 1 as it is. To Jeff Kaplan, it wasn't necessarily abandoning the project, they just saw it as a non-live service game. Therefore, it was justifiable. Also, they believe that PvE should be the primary focus of Overwatch 2, so leaving Overwatch 1's PvP as it was made sense for them. So yeah um i can see some element of i don't want to say truth but logic running through that um i would say that if they did believe that overwatch one wasn't a live service game and it was finished it was complete um they probably thought the gap between overwatch one and overwatch two would be very short and not as long as it's obviously turned out to be um in which case you know if we had overwatch 2 launch 2020 you know or 2021 would people have been that miffed? Probably not. You know, it probably would have been like, ah, oh, okay, it was fine. But obviously, we've got no idea when PvE is coming out. Um, and obviously, we're just moving into the PvP stuff. Anyway, let's move on. Unfortunately, they fell into the development hell for PvE portion of Overwatch 2. He goes into detail regarding this at the early parts of the video, i.e. Bobby Kotick side projects. Yeah, which, which we know from uh, Tracy Kennedy um, tweet, which I think actually is in the video as well. COVID, yeah, and other ongoing Blizzard issues, which, you know, you can't really gloss over that. There were massive issues at Blizzard and still are, arguably. Uh, this led to pressure from Activision Blizzard King leadership regarding the status of Overwatch 2's delivery. And as a result, Jeff Kaplan and Chaki, Chaco Sonny uh, left the team, uh, left as well as others who believed the initial direction of Overwatch and Overwatch 2 development uh, with classic Blizzard perfectionist approach. Now, this can sort of be extrapolated to Jeff and the team at the time wanted to make a good game. Now, I don't think anyone would argue that they want a good game. I want a good game. Everyone wants a good game. Um, and yeah, if you look at it that way, maybe it was taking too much time. Maybe the Blizzard way of old, where I presumably, presumably they operated with very little in the way of restriction. They could just sort of do what they liked was fine. You know, Blizzard had made hits uh, for years and years. And then obviously in this new era, things really changed and maybe that kind of approach just sort of didn't work uh, when it came to, to, to modern games. So you could look at it that way. But then you can also look at it in other ways where maybe whatever the vision was for Overwatch from that leadership team was being pushed in a direction that they didn't want to take it in and their positions became untenable and they had to leave. You know, we don't we don't know what, what went on inside Activision Blizzard. We don't know what the upper management was like to these games. We don't know what these scrapped features were. They could have been horrifically poor features that were being forced on the game that would have ruined the game. And maybe the likes of Jeff and Chaco were able to stand up against that and were able to, you know, deflect the majority of it until such a time of which they, they physically were unable to do that anymore. And then they left. I, I don't know. There's a lot of ways of looking at this. You can look at this and just go, well, Jeff was bad for the game. His vision and whatever was bad for the game. I mean, my my... What I would say to that, my counter would be, um, th th these are the people that gave us Overwatch. You know, and Overwatch was a great game. Uh, there's no denying that. And it was a game that had a lot of content when it launched and it had consistent content updates for the first 18 months or so. And then it started to fade away, um, you know, as things started to change. But yeah, I don't think it's entirely true to say that the leadership was the issue. But of course, I don't know. Like I'm just talking from, 
speculate like complete pure speculation i don't know what happened it would be great at some point if we did um but yeah i don't know like again some some of this might be lost in translation but anyway this is where we get things a bit spicy so as a result walter king at uh, kong sorry comes in from epic games who was responsible for new content pipelines for fortnite as leadership as a leadership figure in overwatch 2 now you can check this if you go to linkedin you'll see walter kong is back at blizzard Used to work at Blizzard, went away for a few years, then came back to Blizzard, um, but went to Epic and worked on Fortnite during its massive explosion um, in popularity. So that is true. He is known in the game dev circle to be a pragmatist with strong experience in delivering continuous content. It was his decision to split PvE and the PvP portion of Overwatch 2 so that PvP portion of the game is not held hostage to PvE's development which still does not have an end in sight, hence why the beta for Overwatch 2 was hurried along and bare bones. So this is quite an interesting point because, again, you can look at this in a number of different ways. So it could be seen that the original team, the original leadership, were we want to launch Overwatch PvP and Overwatch 2 all together. It doesn't matter how long this takes because it doesn't matter what's going on with Overwatch at the moment because we know we've got this great game coming out. However... It would seem that Walter Kong comes along and then says, actually, we can't let what we've got die away. And we've actually got PvP to a point where we can get this out the door in some sort of way. And that's kind of what they've gone for. Now, if that's true, I think a lot of people would say that was a good idea because, I mean, we were all losing our mind about Overwatch. Like, there was no content coming to the game. There was no end in sight. We wanted new. Co we just wanted stuff to talk about the game. We knew the sequel was coming, but we got no idea when. All we knew was, you know, the various delays uh, that would hit development you know so yeah this could be seen as a good move and probably was but then obviously the the, the double-edged sword to this is while we are coming off the back of a very good month i want to say for overwatch content it's now like we're back to the point of before that happened you know because we're still waiting for information on more betas uh, or new beta phases release dates uh, monetization you know things like that and, and we've still got like a year ahead of us almost of uncertainty because i'd imagine that overwatch pve will come out next year at some point pvp you would hope would come out this year but you know we'll see i mean i would hope i would imagine it will but probably towards the end of the year um, but yeah and it just goes on to say like you know hence why the the beta for overwatch 2 was hurried along and and bare bones and this is a direct quote from the source it says without changing leadership to walter Overwatch players would not have had any hands-on experience with Overwatch 2. Only thing they would have seen was endless delays in both showing and delivering the game. Yeah, fair. I mean, like, I, we needed some, we needed something. And if, if they had something ready to go, the game that we play is Overwatch PvP. So giving us the updated version of that makes total sense. And PvE, whenever it comes, yeah, then let's do something big for that. Let's make a big splash and whatever. That's great, you know. So I, I think, yeah, you know, if this is all to be, to be believed, you know, I, I think that was a that was a that was a good move. And then goes on to say, also, this has resulted in a step up from the existing team who had a different mindset to Jeff Kaplan and Co. Which is the name that we are more familiar with, Aaron Keller. He takes over leadership of PvP's development with much stronger focus on continued engagement and content updates. Now, Aaron Keller has worked with Jeff for nearly 20 years. I I can't see them having such a different approach you know like it would be similar like i don't i don't know i i find that difficult to believe i mean it might be true like i said guys this might be true we don't know you could sit here and go well jeff was the problem and you know that's the reason this happened to overwatch but i, I sincerely don't think that's the case i think i think jeff was in a very difficult position and trying to balance making a product basically trying to prevent what's happened with this overwatch 2 beta um I, because it's very difficult to recover from this because if you look at the damage that's been done to this game, it's astronomical. If you look at the likes of the Donkey video, but not even that, there's tons of other videos out there with incredible viewership, which is just trashing on on um, Overwatch 2 because it's not complete. It's not finished. It's the messaging is all wrong. You know, if this was set up to be, uh, hey, this is the beta of PvP and it's just called Overwatch. It's the Overwatch 2 relaunch the overwatch pvp relaunch or the overwatch relaunch or overwatch 2 reloaded or overwatch reload not top two basically anything without the, the number two in i think it would have sit a little bit better with the community but instead they went ahead full guns blazing with overwatch 2 
and obviously suffered a lot of damage. So you could say that if you were Jeff and that team, you want to, you take the hit and you wait, whether that's another year or two. I know this sounds terrible because as a player of the game, like, I mean, what the hell, two years is crazy uh, to wait or even longer. But you take that hit to ensure that when you do launch, you launch with the impact you want and you want players to go, wow, it was worth the wait. Instead, we've got a case of, this is it. Is this literally Overwatch 2? You've got to be joking me. Of course, we all know that's not true. But on the surface level, it looks like that. And that's a really, really hard place to come back from. Um, so maybe Jeff's team were trying to prevent that. I just don't know. Anyway, the TLDR, which just gives a little bit more info. It, it says, under Jeff Kaplan, the initial development of Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 had a perfectionist approach without consideration for continuous content pli pipeline. Walter Kong and Aaron Keller takes on the new school of live service model, much more like other online games compared to the previous approach. Overwatch 2's PvE is still a question mark, but Overwatch 2 PvP beta wouldn't have been a thing if there was no change in development direction. And apparently, uh, this will give us validity to the, uh, the leak. Uh, there's a video coming up detailing the behind the scenes information regarding 5v5 change and roll lock next week as well. If people are interested, I can have a go at summarizing some of that as well. Okay, so if we, we get something about 5v5 next week or this week or whatever, then, okay, we can say that this leak is kind of accurate because they do have, you know, they've got some sort of insider information. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, I I think Overwatch's development is obviously in not great. Whether that's just been because of what's been happening in the Overwatch team, I don't think we'll ever know. Whether that's because of Blizzard, I don't. Again, I don't think we'll ever know. But we know there's been problems all over the place within that company, so all of this adds up. But I think it's just a weird one, like for me especially, because it's sort of coming off the high of um, leading up into the alpha and then leading into the into the beta. And you know, I be under no illusions, guys. Feedback was definitely given um, during those phases of, well, especially during the early phase of the alpha. Um, in fact, during the early phase of the alpha, over, the Overwatch 2 logo wasn't even in the client. It was Overwatch. It was just called the, it was just, you, you loaded in, it was just Overwatch. Um, so maybe it was a last minute decision to just go, no, we need to go Overwatch 2. Let's go for that. Or maybe that was always the plan all along. But what I was saying is the point is it was very obvious that if you put this out and say it's Overwatch 2, people are just going to clown on you because it's like you've got one hero. What have you been doing for years? You've got a few maps. We've seen these before. Game mode, we've seen it before. I, and I know it sounds ludicrous for me to say that because I know that's not true and you guys know that's not true. We know this additional bait is coming but, but because we know <laughs> this is a relaunch of Overwatch PvP. It's a commitment to start updating the game. Now, I don't know. I don't know what to, to read from this. I think the major takeaway I've got from all of this is probably the team wasn't built to um, continue making content. And I guess the hope now is it is but it makes content that's good and doesn't just give us crap. Now, we also know as well, um, there's probably a battle pass in this. We've seen the leaks, um, which have been quite plentiful in the client, um, in the beta client, that is. Um, you can data mine the client and you'll see various entries that uh, basically relate to various uh, stacks of data. And there's quite considerable data in there, which is all about battle pass and stuff like that. So, yeah, and, and a lot of that would add up with um, Walter Kong, um and his fortnite history so yeah and that's not a good or a bad thing you know that's just probably means that hey we're going to get more content for overwatch too anyway weird time for me at the moment because like i said we're coming off the back of a big big update um compared to the last like you know almost three years and it's felt like it's almost felt like going back to the launch of overwatch so there's a bunch of videos that could be made it's really cool to do that um, but now it's like we've hit a wall and it's like well what can we do i actually tried to do a Overwatch League video recently didn't do very well, so I probably won't do that again. <laughs> That's as simple as these things go. Also lost 200 subs <laughs> because of that, because why not? Anyway, yeah, I'm going to keep it real with you guys like I'm, I've am i always been trying to do. I'll keep news updates coming on the game and stuff, but I think we'll go quiet for a little bit now until we actually get stuff off Blizzard um, or the stuff actually worth talking about because I just don't think people are into the content that much, um, especially like daily content and stuff like that. Not at the moment. Not until things pick up again, hopefully. But it's going to be difficult for Blizzard, isn't it? Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Um, I've been Salosa, 
and uh, I best drink the rest of my coffee because it's actually going cold. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Toodaloo.